There we go. So welcome, January Kenya team. I know there's only five of you here today, but you never know, more might join. And yes, we will send it out. So you've got a recording and everyone else can see it. So the purpose of today is A, you can nosy and take a look at each other and think, Jesus, am I really sharing my five-week program with them? Oh, yes, you are. But we are also going to run through, we're going to get you organized. So flights, picking up from the airport, what to expect, your accommodation, what to pack, money, SIM cards, all that, okay? So as we go through each section, we're going to try and nail this in kind of 20, 25 minutes. As we go through each section, just wave at me, get my attention, and ask me questions, okay? So let's start off. Your flight right now, all of you are on the same Air Ethiopia flight. Okay. Now I've done this journey many, many times. It is fine. Okay. Air Ethiopia is fine. It's not luxury, but I tell you what, the planes are actually nicer than British Airways planes at the moment. So it's okay. What you need are your own headphones. Okay. Because the headphones that they give to work their big tellies, by the way, are useless. So take your headphones with the pluggable, they don't have Wi-Fi, your pluggable thing, and I will send you the link to the adapter that you need to get. Okie dokes, because it's, well, you can look it up. It's a two-prong adapter as opposed to just one hole. Okay, unless they've upped their planes, but which I highly doubt. Okay, so you've got the seven hours across, then you've got um, three or four hours in Addis Airport. Brace yourself and don't mess about. When you get there, get off the plane because when you have to, you have to go through baggage check, take your shoes off, everything goes through before you get into the um, transit section. There's a couple of nice cafes to so sniff them about. Top tip, switch your mobile data off before you even get off that aeroplane because I didn't, and I was fleeced like 30 quid for one second, you know, I just didn't do it. So there is, there are Wi-Fi cafes there, but don't do, make the error that I did. Okay, then you're going to do the little leg over to Mombasa. Again, it's, it's welcome to Africa. It's very, very slow. So you will be queuing to get through the immigration. You need all your paperwork printed off. The week before you go, I will send you a final email with the most up-to-date information that you need to print off pre your flight. So don't worry about that now because it does change. And there are so we'll just look at the latest, latest version in the last week. Oh, we've got two more people joining. Yay. Um hello, hello, Will. Um so um so um so that when you get to Mombasa okay you are going to come through and there will be a car minibuses everything waiting for you with look for the sign the leap okay do not go wandering off it's like arriving into a huge cattle shed that's what Mombasa airport looks like it's got no glamour to it i think it's barely got a loo so uh, it's a cattle shed just follow the kind of exit and they'll be waiting for you there. Takes about an hour and a half to drive to Vipingo, where the house is based. So it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Pot, pot, pot holy road. So again, you're, you're kind of first kind of culture experience. Um, so hold on. Here's Will again. Let's see if we can get him this time. Okay. So any questions? with the airport one thing just to add I... Hi, Millie. i'm really sorry i had a load of technical difficulties that's all right you're forgiven you're Thank forgiven you. you're on record now so 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 oh. that's that's but really nice of you to join um where was i well you've missed the beginning but i'm just it's just about the airport when you get to heathrow check yourselves in independently Okay, and then meet on the other side. In my last email, I will send you the kind of a, a cafe in that particular terminal where you can all meet and congregate. But 
don't wait just check yourself in and go through okay yeah um right as for your itinerary it's five weeks and the purpose of this entire program is for you guys to help our great friends called Des and Tilda who have set up this NGO called Oceans Alive. They are huge pioneering conservationists based on the coast of Kenya. And they have single-handedly set up this um, their, their project, which is now being copied up and down the Indian Ocean, linking up other projects throughout Kenya, Tanzania, as far down to Mozambique. So it's really, really exciting to be part of something which is 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 huge and it's making a huge difference to the state of the corals the state of the fish and the livelihoods for the local fishermen so at a brief out outline you will be involved in the coral gardening the coral gardening is helping rebuild the coral the coral reefs which line the indian ocean from top to bottom from um from kenya all the way down to south africa okay they are being destroyed. They're being destroyed by uh, tourism and by overfishing. So this particular base that Des and Tilda have designated this area, this conservation marine site, there's no fishing for six months of the year. OK, so the fishermen can't tread and walk all over the coral, damaging it. And B, they're not overfishing on the inner side of the reef. OK, you will learn all about this. But fundamentally, practically, you are going to be with, you know, your snorkels on every morning, coral gardening, moving, finding bits, supplanting it onto other coral structures and back into the deep, darkest coral reefs. And while you're doing that, you are going to be surrounded by Nemo and all his friends. It is glorious, sparkling coral, amazing fish, dolphins everything it is just heaven so you will experience that but then you've also part of the project is to help the fishermen because they can't fish for six months of the year find alternative methods of uh food source and income so we have built um these you will be building these gico stoves which are say this size miniature argus Literally, that is the principle behind these stoves. At the moment, in each village, you have one fishing, fishmonger lady who is in charge of the fish. Her husband and the bring her all the fish. It's fresh and it goes off overnight. Hopeless. Got to start all again the next day. But with these Gico stoves, they can now fry this fish, which means that this fish will last two or three days. Therefore, they need less supply from the sea genius it's so simple so you'll be going building these stoves but the experience you get in building these stoves is going into the heart of the community to the heart of these lovely people these wonderful families into their homes messing about just really being welcomed into the heart of the community which is a very very special experience which you will you'll get when you're there the other thing that we try and do is, which you'll be doing, is learning about permaculture. So we build vertical gardens out of old cement, uh, old cement bags. And literally you will see in these basic, basic mud dust houses, these cement bags overflowing with peppers and lettuces and herbs and things, which they then sell to the market. So it's really, really interesting to see that. And the third part of the project, third part of the wheel of change, as we call it, is the plastic. You will see the beaches, which are so stunning. Plastic gets delivered every day, thanks to the tides. So there will be the old community um, uh, pickup, but it will be more so that you can then help with the kind of design with the local ladies in what they can do and what they can make out of the rubbish that they get. The plastic bottles are now made into guttering on their houses, um, you know, uh, linking up houses and houses. Old flip flops are kind of cut into key rings. It's it's genius what you will see and you will be able to help kind of push their designs forward and, you know, give them fresh ideas. So that is what the project is all about. 
but your experience on a day-to-day -day basis is variety. In the morning, you're going to be in the ocean. At lunchtime, you're going to be in the community. In the afternoon, you're going to be on the beach. Every day is full, varied, and different. So no two days are going to be the same. So if anybody gets bored, I will be amazed. You know, I know as a mother of two teenage boys myself, I know uh, that boredom is very, very quick to kind of settle in. So that is like the pace will be quick. OK, so any questions on the itinerary and the goals of the project? Not the itinerary, just the goals of the project. All happy with that. Happy, happy. OK, cool. Um, the optional add-ons, the scuba and the safari. If you haven't told me already, I need to know who is who is up for it. Yeah, who wants to do the 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 add-ons? I mean, you don't have to confirm until you get out there, but it's good to have an idea before you go. Okay, the safari. If you could only do one, do the safari. Okay, because the safari is run is very special, and that the guide that runs it, he's an old boy and he he knows his way around Kenya. And I went to Savo National Park in the summer. Uh, just with my husband, who thought he was Croc Dundee, but he really wasn't. And we didn't see nothing. He went literally two days and saw everything. So he is and he's got an amazing uh, pair of eyes and can find and track everything. So that would be the experience I would go for if you could only do one. Um, very few people do do the scuba, but if you want to do it, it's easily arranged. Um, now, the safari, I know it's expensive. So you have got to agree as a team for those that want to do it. When you talk to the guides out there, uh, what your budget is, whether you want to do three days is the kind of is is the best time. Anything is kind of minimum time. Anything extra to that is a bonus. But he will talk you through what's available at this time of year what he recommends, there'll be a bit of kind of um, wild camping, there'll be a bit of staying in a lodge, staying in a hostel, there's going to be a bit of everything. So just, you know, you'll decide when you're there. Okay. So will you let me know, just send me a quick email saying uh, safari, yes, scuba, maybe or whatever it is. Okay. Any questions? No, no. OK, your accommodation. Let's just talk about this. This is nice. OK, uh, it is a old. Oh, oh, no. Hi, Phoebe. Uh, have you got a question? No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. OK, so the... sorry, my Wi-Fi is really bad. No, that's fine. So the accommodation is pretty nice. It's based right on the beach. It used to be an old hotel. So it could do with a lick of paint, but uh, no one's got around to giving it a lick of paint. So ultimately you kind of, you drive in, it's got one huge building where you kind of have meetings that's inside, but outside you've got probably three or four different places to eat all undercover to chill out it's got a bar which gets stocked in the evenings and then it's got these sweet little thatch rondavel style houses kind of round where two to three um, in a bedroom with a little ensuite bathroom don't get excited it's not luxury that ensuite but it does have a flushing loo and it does have a cold shower now i think there is a warm shower but you know it's it's not luxury it is basic but you've got nice beds, comfy beds, you've got mosquito nets, and half of you will have sea views. The other half will be on the second row. And I think they literally um, halfway through flip you. So, you know, for those that want to sea view, you do do a swap halfway through the trip. But it's all very, very nice. But it's very, very chill. There's loads of areas just to hang out. In the evening, they set up this bar to just have a few beers, chill, play cards, hang out the bonfires on the beach, that type of vibe, okay? You've got three meals a day provided. You might, during kind of each week, want to go to Vapingo, which is this very swanky golf club, but it's literally 10 minutes away and it's really nice, got amazing views, and they do kind of half price pizza nights, I think, midway through. So you might want to do that as a kind of optional extra, but um, I don't know. During the week, it's, it's kind of camp 
based. Um, at the weekends, you can, you know, whiz about. So you're not working at the weekends. And most people choose to catch the bus into um, Khalifi, which is a gorgeous kind of kind of cool little place. It's got a very cool bar called Salties. If any of you wanted to take up um, kite surfing, that is a great place to learn. At the weekends, you can just, you know, rent a board, have, an, have a lesson. I don't know what the cost is. My kids did it. I think it's about kind of 60 US dollars for an hour. So it does add up, but they're brilliant professionals and it is an amazing place to do it. But there's lots of little backpacker lodges there to stay in and there's a you know occasionally they have live music at salties so that's the place where everybody heads to at the weekends okay any questions no no okay rattling on okay now we're going to move on to the kind of subjects such as money money the local currency is the kenyan shilling do not try and get this at home just don't even bother. So you will, when you arrive on day one, or maybe even when you've just been picked up from Mombasa, you'll be taken to an ATM where you will get your money out. Okay, the local currency. You get little and often out. So don't just think, right, I need to go and get 400, 400 quids worth of shillings. You just don't want that because, you know, you just don't want to kind of get it nicked or just lose it. So just get small amounts and often. I highly recommend that you get hold of a Monzo Revolut or a Starling ca card because then you've got free withdrawals, okay? But in addition to taking and using that card, please take a debit card as a backup card. That's really, really important, okay? Don't forget the backup debit card. Um, SIM cards, very, very easy to get a local SIM card. Um, again, you'll be that will happen on the first day or so. Please take two telephones. Okay, you've got your main phone, which has got everything in it, but you'd be amazed how many people get it nicked when you're at Salty's and you've had a beer or two, where or you drop it into the sea, you it's, you know, you walk on it in the sand. It's just amazing. So please take a backup phone. Wi-Fi, there is Wi-Fi in camp, but it's Wi-Fi to send the odd WhatsApp. It is not big enough to start downloading YouTube and videos, okay? So um, if you do, literally it will explode the machine on the top of the house. So it's li literally just for the basic communication. Kit list, okay, in your MyLeap area is your kit, okay? please take everything on that list, okay? It is absolutely vital that you take a snorkel and mask, absolutely vital that you take a pair of reef shoes, okay? And those sun tops, you know what I mean? Those UV sun tops to keep you, you know, people wear surfing, absolutely vital. Without those, you will not be able to participate in any of the coral the coral gardening okay so those are vital do not forget and simple things it's amazing what people forget a hat guys please take a hat if not two a water bottle essential um uh towels masses of bikinis masses of bathing costume um swimmers boys you you live in those okay the other thing Boys, you just zone out for a minute. I'm talking to the girls. Girls, it's amazing, very, very common out there to get, because everyone is sitting in wet swimsuits all day, to get UTIs. And it's actually really expensive. You can get every every type of um, uh, medic medicine in Kenya. Really, it's absolutely brilliant, everything, without a prescription even. But weirdly... The medicine for a UTI is really expensive. So if you can, if you're prone to that, be mindful, take stuff accordingly. And, you know, self-management for you all is really, really key. You do not want to sit around in wet swimmers all day. That is a disaster. You get kind of not even going to go there, but just don't do it. OK, so take loads of stuff to chop and change. Um, in the evenings, you want 
because of the mosquitoes, you want long sleeves, thin, thin shirts, and you get these really cool thin, thin cotton shirts out there, which are really, really nice. So you need long sleeves, I would take, and those long trousers, long cotton trousers. Yeah, light, because it's very, very hot. Okay, and loads of mosquito repellent. Okay. Billy? Yeah? How many pairs of trousers would you recommend you take? Three. Three of everything. Three. Yeah. Three pairs of shorts, three pairs of really light cotton trousers, because you wear one, you've got one in the wash, and you've got one spare. But when it comes to swimming trunks, take at least five. Okay. Wait, so can you actually, like, wash your clothes? Yes, you can. How often? Well, you've got, you are, you will have lovely, lovely ladies. If it comes to your bra and knickers, you're washing those yourself every night in the shower, hanging on the line. Everything else, you will ask the lovely ladies in the village, in the camp, to wash them for you, and then you will tip them at the end. Okay? Yeah. So you could get everything, everything, you know, turned over pretty quickly. Okay. okay. But swimmers, loads, little vesty tops, shorts for the day. Uh, when it comes to shoes, um, I would be taking a pair of shoes, pair of old knackered trainers that you really don't care about. Okay, for when you're going into the villages to build the Jico stoves and you're messing about with cement, da 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 da. When you're going hiking through um, on safari, you know, dusty, you, you won't want to bring them home. Then you've got your nice shoes, which you want to wear in the evenings, your nice trainers, and then one pair of flip flops, Crocs, or Birkenstocks. Yep. So you're that most people. I know Crocs, you're thinking, gosh, she's so sad. They're so ugly. I wouldn't be caught dead in them. Actually, they're highly practical. I know practical is not a thing of beauty, but, you know, it's amazing. You won't care when you're out there. The plastic Birkenstocks, winner. Everyone, a lot of the, those are really, really practical. And boys, I don't know, if you, I don't know a pair of flip-flops, something that you can just scoot on and off that's really easy. But the most important thing is those really ugly, unattractive reef shoes. Those are vital. Okay, personal admin, moving on. We need you to fill in those personal admin forms. And I need to know all the weird and wonderful stuff that you've got tucked away that you might think, not think are important. Such as, you'd be amazed how many people don't tell us that they've got an acute nut allergy. I know. It's really annoying. So please, can you tell us? Okay. I, and we are, I, I am jesting and I'm doing it with, with care, you know, mental health issues, physical health issues, um, sleeping. If people, you know, can't have a sleeping problem and get weird when they haven't, you know, feel out of sorts when they haven't slept for a few days, all these things. If we know before you go, I can brief the team out there and they can look after you as you know and really help you bed in in that first week because the first week is the toughest week. It's you all getting used to each other, kind of making new friends, getting used to this new environment, learning how to manage yourself, you know, from you know the salt water, from the mosquitoes, you know, in the, you know the bugs in the evening. You know there's there's a lot to kind of get get used to. The, the food, the water, everything. So just, you know, if there's anything we can help for you to bed in the first week, let us know. And if you are worried in that first week, the leaders that are there are absolutely gorgeous. Ornella and Lizzie and Juma, they are there to make your whole experience utter heaven. And they they just will bend over backwards to make it a really positive experience. So talk to them, okay? Now I'm putting my mother serious hat on, okay? Safety. Don't be that idiot, okay? Don't be that idiot that decides on the first night they've squirreled in a bottle of whiskey from Duty Free and they're going to consume it in the first night plus 10 beers. I mean, and then wonder why they've thrown up everywhere and everyone's kind of irritated with them the next day. Don't be that idiot, 
Okay, I've seen them all before. I know that, you know, every year we have one. So please don't be that idiot. And, you know, everyone lo loves to have a beer in the evening. This is welcome to Africa, watching the sunset go down and having a sundowner. It is part of the lifestyle. But, you know, it's all everything in moderation. Okay, mother hat off now. So that is everything from me. Any questions from any of you? No? Nope. Okay, that's all good then. Okay, you really are in for a treat. You really, really are. So you've just got it. You, and I know you will make the most of every single day. Oh, onward travel. Okay, I know a few of you want to travel on after the program. We can easily help you with that. Okay, so we've got contacts, you know, going up further up the coast, up to Watamu and Lamu, very, very easy. Okay, but if you want to go inland into kind of the highlands of Kenya, around Nanuki and around there, maybe climb, climb Mount Kenya, go white water rafting, easy peasy. We've got contacts all over the place. So in about week three, I'll send you an email going and giving you a nudge going, do you want to travel on afterwards? If so, we will then I will then talk to your parents about extending your flight and then start feeding you contacts within Kenya that you can talk to to add on and create an independent add on. But we'll, we'd be there in the background. But um, there, there's some great other opportunities. You could even go down to Zanzibar in Tanzania. So, you know, we've got great contacts all through Africa. If you want to travel on afterwards, you just need to tell me. Okie dokes. Right. Well, that's it. Over and out for now. Happy Christmas to you all. And um, I look forward to seeing the photos of you all on that glorious beach with your sunglasses and hat and water bottle in hand with your reef shoes on. Okay. Suntan lotion. Last top tip. So expensive out there. Take loads with you. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Millie. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.